shot number 10. Amen. I just feel like, you know, when the Lord puts a message upon your heart that He aligns things, and that's very, very neat to see um, and experience. And so tonight, I just want to, for a few moments, um, look at the Word of God. And I feel like it's just an alignment uh, with everything that's happening tonight. Amen. Luke chapter number 10. I'm going to start reading verse number 38. The Word of God says, Now it came to pass as they went, that he entered into a certain village, and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was comforted about with much serving and came to him and said, Lord, doest thou not care that my sister had left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled for about many things, but one thing is needful, and Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Amen. But Martha, but Mary has chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. You know, Martha was concerned about all the details, and she was very anxious as she was serving the Lord and attending to Jesus visiting in her home and, and uh, the atmosphere uh, uh, surrounding her home. She wanted everything just to be right. And so she was giving great detail and great devotion to, to making sure all was right. But it was dominating her heart and it was dominating her mind, making sure the details of everything was just right. Now, we may have some detail-oriented people in here by nature. Some people are more detail-oriented. Some people are not. So if you're a very detail-oriented person, then this, this is nothing in reflection to you and the details that are so important to your life. However, when the details become more important than the most important thing sitting at the feet of Jesus, then the details really aren't important at all. And so here it is that Mary, uh, Mary uh, her approach to the presence of the Lord in her home was much different than what was the approach of Martha. Martha was concerned about everything else, all the details. But Mary's approach was so different. She wanted to linger in His presence. She wanted all the information that she could get from God. Give me the information. Master, Rabbi, teach me. I want everything that I can glean and, and gain for you. Amen. For all the affairs of my life. Here was Martha. She was concerned about the affairs of her life. And, and uh, 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 she, she, she was concerned about all the details. But she wasn't concerned about all the words that came from the lips of Jesus Christ. I want to question this tonight. The details of life. The details even of serving Christ. Versus tonight what we're experiencing. Being able just to sit at the feet of Jesus. Sit at the feet of Jesus. You see, both of them are very purpose driven. Martha, her purpose was to take care of everything that was going on and all the details in the house and the food, the hospitality and the serving and making sure everyone was comfortable. That was her purpose. Yeah. However, Mary's purpose was quite different. She realized that Jesus had passed by and the purpose for her was that she wanted every word that fell from the lips of Jesus. She wanted it to be like honey that would fall upon her ears and deep down in her heart and would teach her all the ways that she can navigate life. <coughs> and so here it is. 
I want you to think about this, what's happening here. Here is Christ and He's coming. And we often think about Jesus coming and being at the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. But when we read this, the Bible gives us the ideology that, that here it is that Jesus and His disciples, they are passing through a certain village. And here it is, Bethany, that they're passing by. They're not a stranger to. But they stop at the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And as they stop by, it's not just Jesus there, but there are disciples there as well. Here they are coming together. And Jesus, the Bible says, says in Acts chapter number uh, uh, 10 verse number 38 that he's always going about doing good and here he was passing by the house of Mary and Martha and Lazarus and he was coming by to do good. Yes. But somewhere in the middle of it all, Martha thought she had to be the one to do good. And Martha, she was, uh, she was concerned for entertaining everybody else. But she wasn't concerned about being entertained of the presence of God. How often is it we come and we want to entertain others and have a relationship, but how often is it that we just come to entertain the presence of God? God, let me entertain your presence. That doesn't mean that we need to be covered about with much serving. It means that we choose the good part that Jesus said, that we sit and listen. That's the entertainment that Christ wants of us. And so she's also experiencing some things. And I'm going to give kudos to Martha because I don't think she's concerned about the cost of everything. Here it is. She's having to make food and feed and care for everyone. And I don't hear her complaining about the cost of anything. Here she is. She's, she's, she doesn't care what the cost is. She just wants to make sure everybody is taken care of. Amen. But the greater cost would be, let's put it all aside. And I don't care what the cost is to a little bit later of having to prepare food or make room for everybody. But the cost right now is for me to give my devotion to Christ. Can I ask you, have you counted the cost tonight? And have you made up your mind that I'm going to be in the presence of God? Amen. I'm going to listen to the voice of God. I'm going to be sensitive to the Spirit of God. And I'm going to pay the cost no matter what. Even if it means no matter what anyone else thinks of me. And so He comes not for entertainment, but He comes because He's wanting to preach and He's wanting to share. Christ has not come here tonight. The Holy Ghost has not come by here and is here. And I feel the Spirit of God here tonight. He's come tonight, not for us to try to entertain and become it, but for us to choose the good part and to set. When's the last time that you set the feet of Jesus? When's the last time that you just sat there without being distracted by anything else? See, she sat at the feet of Jesus. Mary did. And all indications, and I like how Matthew Henry in his commentary says this, she sat at the feet of Jesus so that she could sit with Him in eternity. Are you worried about your eternity tonight? Amen. Sitting at the feet of Jesus so that we can spend all eternity with Him. But the Bible says that Martha was so concerned with all, all, all the domestic things. She was covered with serving. Amen. And here it is. Maybe she didn't know about Jesus coming. We have no idea if she knew that Jesus was passing by. But one thing we know, that He showed up. And when she sh He showed up, then all of a sudden, she's concerned. And she, she needs all this domestic stuff done. Can I tell you, life can be full of all types of domestic stuff that we need to get done. There are jobs and responsibilities there are schedules and things that we have to do in the middle of life. But can I tell you that there comes a time when Jesus passes by and all that domestic stuff just has to wait. God help us tonight to wait in the presence of Jesus. Amen. Uh, Mary, she could have been distracted by the domestic stuff and all the details of life, but she realized the most important thing is Jesus is passing by. He doesn't always pass by this way. So I'm choosing to sit at His feet. That other stuff can wait. Amen. Tonight, can everything else wait so that you can be in the presence of God? 
I realize more and more that we live in a world that is so computer driven. I mean, we feel like we have to be connected to a network of people. Uh, God help us if our phone breaks down or our computer goes out. But can I tell you that those are the domestic things that distract us from a real visitation with the presence of God? We get distracted by all the things of life, taking care of people, what they're saying, what they're thinking. Amen. That we forget the most important thing is sitting at the feet of Jesus and hearing what He has to say for our life. Amen. <coughs> the Bible says, and when she had a sister Mary who was also set at the feet of Jesus and she heard the word of the Lord. Let me just say one thing here before I move on. Hearing the word of the Lord is important. As we read the written word, as we hear the preached word, as the Spirit of God ministers to us, we need the word of God. Amen. Amen. Not entertainment. Amen. The word of God. Amen. And the Bible says, And Martha was cumbered about with much serving and came to him. That word cumbered is very interesting. When you look at it in its original context, we don't probably use that word very often in our English language cumbered, maybe. But what does it mean? Do you know what that word actually means? It means distracted. Distracted. How many times have we come into the house of God and and the Word of God is being preached, but we're distracted. How many times have we come in where the Spirit of God is moving, but we're distracted? Distractions can be very detrimental. <clears throat> Ask someone who's been in a car accident who was distracted by their cell phone. Or ask someone who uh, was distracted while they were making some food for supper and all of a sudden it's burnt or it's ruined because they've been distracted. Now, how many of you have ever been distracted from something before? You were watching the clock and you knew that there needed to be a particular time that you needed to fulfill something, but all of a sudden in the middle of life you got distracted. Can I tell you that that is what Jesus told Martha her problem was? You have got distracted. I want you to sit at my feet. I want you to hear the words that I am speaking. But you are distracted. Amen. We cannot afford in life to become distracted. Amen. Our attention and our focus has to be upon Jesus Christ. The Word of God, Paul said, that those who are engaged in this, this, this race, who are engaged in this warfare that we're in, they cannot be entangled again with the things of this world. Amen. God help us not to be distracted. Right. The most important thing in our life is taking care of our soul. Yes, I know we can be distracted by a lot of things. Jobs are important. Amen. Family responsibilities are important. There are things that we have to do. But when those things distract us from the things of God, it's detrimental. And so, Martha, <coughs> you're being distracted. You're being cumbered. How many of you ever missed paying a bill because you were just simply distracted? I want to tell you something tonight. The world wants to distract you. There's an enemy against your soul. He wants to distract you from holy living. He wants to distract you from commitment to God. He wants to distract you from that life of sanctification. He wants to distract you from that life of going farther and deeper in Jesus Christ. He wants to distract you from doing great things for the kingdom of God. And so the world is out to distract you. Sister Rachel talked this morning about how important it is for us in our life to be intentional to our children because we blink our eye and they're grown. Brother Doug, you've told me that many times. Amen. But how about our spiritual life? We think about the physical things about life. Children growing and, 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 and as they grow up and you think, where did those years go? Amen. But how about our life? spiritually when we think God I've been distracted wasted years wasted moments that's what Martha is wasted time it's not that she's not busy it's not that she doesn't feel like she's fulfilling the things that are important 
But what's happening is Jesus said you're distracting from what's most important. I wonder if tonight in this service, what has our attention been to even the presence of God? I'm not saying that condemning. I'm saying that challenging. Where are we? We allow people to distract us. There's always going to be someone in your path who's going to be a thorn in your flesh. Probably almost always. That's the way life works. But if you allow them to distract you from being at the feet of Jesus, then you've been cumbered and you've chose wrong. <coughs> She should have been with her sister at his feet, hearing the word of God, not feeling like she was serving alone. Sometimes we can get that woe is me attitude, can't we? And that's where Martha is. Do I think Martha was a bad lady? Absolutely not. I think Martha was a great lady who really cared about the details of people. In fact, when I read and study about Martha, most commentators would think that Mary, Martha, and Lazarus were wealthy. And so, Sister Jenny, they didn't need to serve. They had other people who would serve for them. But her heart, her heart, Brother Craig, was that she wanted to serve people. She wanted, Brother Doug, more than anything, to serve people. And that's why, for her, her heart was good, but her heart was in the wrong place. Where is your heart? Can I ask you where your treasure is tonight? Because the Word of God says that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And if your heart is upon being at the feet of Jesus, then that's where your treasure will be. Or if your treasure is trying to get all the domestic things in life done, then that's where your treasure will be also. And you're distracted. You're making a wrong choice. So choosing to be at Jesus see, she said, Lord, don't you care? She had that attitude that, God, you must not even care. You must not even be concerned about doing all this work. And then this is what I notice. Hold on to your seat, every family member. But when the whole family is not in tune to be in the presence of God, it causes friction and problems. Now Martha is upset with Mary because Mary's not helping. And there's tension in the room. Don't you care, my sister, look what she's done to me. But Jesus said, Martha, the problem is not Mary's. It's yours. It's yours. Amen. Sister Beth will come to the piano tonight. I just want to ask you this this evening. Where is your heart? You know, I can be ministry minded, but never set the feet of Jesus. Mm -hmm. You can be ministry minded and never set the feet of Jesus. You can be religious. I dress just right. I talk just right. I act just right. But you're so cumbered with all that that you've never taken time to be at the feet of Jesus. And so tonight I just feel the presence of God is here so strong. I just want to invite you are you distracted? Forget about the domestic things. Forget about others. Would you just forget about everything that needs to be done right now? And just know that the most needful thing is that Jesus is in the house. Mm -hmm. And he wants us to sit at his feet. Our families would be different if we each learn to sit at the feet of Jesus. Finding that that is the most needful thing. 
Tonight, folks, I'm just in a different place, and I feel like God is preparing for service. Sitting at the feet of Jesus. If we sit at the feet of Jesus, then we learn how to sit in heavenly places with the Lord. Do you want God to lift you up above where you are right now? And just allow you to sit in a heavenly place with Him? It begins when Jesus passes by. He's passing by doing good. But He's coming by wanting us to sit at His feet. Tonight, without any further ado, let's just gather in and each one find himself a place of prayer on the altars for the front pew. And would you just spend some time sitting?